Hey guys, it's Shaylin and I'm here today with another writing video. So today I'm doing a publication update video, which is very fun. More than a year ago, I had had four short stories published and so I made a video where I just chatted about each story and did a little Q&A and I thought I would do a similar thing again because I've also got four new published stories to chat about. Some of these did come out a while ago, but I never actually like formally announced them in an announcement video. So I thought it would be worth it. I'm gonna go through in order that they were published. So I thought I would chat a bit about like the journey to publication for each story because it's kind of interesting um, and very different for each one. So the first story I had published was Hold Me Under Till I See the Light in the New Quarterly. This is issue 156. It was their fall or winter issue from last year. It literally came out in like November of 2020. So it's been a while, but I never made an announcement video about it. So I'm including this to have more content. <laughs> this is a story about a 15 year old girl named Rainy who lives in and has uh, lived her whole life in a gated religious community. Essentially, it is a cult. At the beginning of the story, her older sister Iris tells her that she's decided to run away. So she says to Rainy, you can't come with me, you're too young, but I'm gonna find you a replacement sister. It's a really long summary for like a 4,000 word story. I first wrote this story, I think it was in December of 2018. Was it? Yeah, it was December of 2018. I remember when I wrote it, I was like, this is the best story I've ever written. And it probably is still to this day, one of the best stories I've ever written. I don't know. I don't really know how to judge which of my stories is the best. I feel like I don't really have the scope for that. But I can say that it is definitely one of my favorite stories I've ever written. Part of the reason the journey to publication was so long is because back in the day, 2018, 2019, I used to take forever to edit things. So I wrote this in yeah, the end of 2018. I gave it to a couple friends to read in like, the spring to critique it because I wanted to submit it to a journal. So I started submitting it that spring or summer and I guess I thought that this story would get picked up quite quickly. I don't know, I just felt like in terms of topic and theme it would be an easier story to place than some of the more niche stuff that I've written. In the fall I submitted it to the New Quarterly. The New Quarterly at the time was only taking mail-in submissions. Now they have online submissions, but at the time they were only doing mail-in. This is the only time I've ever mailed in a story. And it was a team effort to mail this story. So shout out to my friends who lent me a stamp, an envelope, and a paper clip, because I somehow had none of those things. In the spring, I get an email from the New Quarterly that was like, hey, could you maybe resubmit it online? Because we've moved to a remote office due to the pandemic and so we need a digital copy of your story. And they were like, please submit through this link. Uh, if you submit through just like the main one, you'll lose your spot in the queue and we want to keep your spot in the queue. And I remember thinking, if they didn't like the story, they would just reject me right now. Unless they haven't looked at it, but they'd had it for like eight months. They would just send me a rejection. They wouldn't ask me to send it again. So it's probably in consideration. And then a couple months later, I got unaccepted. I submitted the story for about a year before it got picked up, the New Quarterly had it for a very long time. Like I submitted it to the New Quarterly in September and I got it accepted in like June or July or something. And then it came out in their fall issue. That's that one. Um, it's still one of my favorite stories I've ever written and I'm actually planning to expand it to a novel. Ever since the beginning, I knew that I wanted to expand it to a novel. When I first got the idea, which was not really like spurred by anything, I think I just had this image in my mind of these two girls on bikes, riding bikes through a field. And I was like, this is a story. And I saw that image really clearly and I could feel the emotions around it. And that's what turned into this story. I knew right away that it was a novel and a short story. So I always intended it to be both, but yeah, this is the short story. I'm excited to do the novel. If you'd like to read this story, you can order a copy of the issue from TNQ. It was posted online for a period of time but it is no longer available. I'll be sneaky and let you know that there is a web archive. Um, I will link it in this video because I am nice. <laughs> so the second story is called Beautiful Animal and it's in Room. I have a couple of their issues because I know other people who've been in their issues and I've liked their vibe. <laughs> I'd submitted to them before. With Hold Me Under Till I See the Light, that was the first time I'd ever submitted to the New Quarterly. I so that is actually completely untrue. I had submitted to the New Quarterly before. I had submitted to one of their contests and the reason I submitted this story to the New Quarterly is because when I submitted to their contest, 
it was with one of my more grounded, realistic stories, Wishbone, and even though I didn't make the longest on the contest, the editor had sent me a personalized rejection saying that I had been close to making the long list. So that's part of why I knew that this was a style of work that they were into. I completely forgot about that. I wrote the first draft of this story in the spring of 2019. I think it was May of 2019. And the idea came from just an image I had in my mind of these two characters standing in a pond, and I knew it was a koi pond, in a backyard at night. And it was the backyard of like a, a big house modern looking, you know, like some rich people live here. There was a party happening in the house and I didn't really know the context. I didn't know why they were there. I didn't know who they were to each other. I didn't even really see the characters or what they looked like. That image turned into a story and it got a little strange. So this is a story about um, a nameless main character who I view this character as male and I wrote him as a man. Originally he even was named actually, but I, I cut his name. In the actual printed draft, he's pretty much gender neutral. He works at like a seafood restaurant as a summer job. He's a college student and he's been having like a summer fling with one of the waitresses there named Lolly. And Lolly has a strange quirk, which is that she eats live animals. <laughs> She breaks up with him because it's like the end of the summer and this was only ever meant to be like a summer thing, nothing serious. But he's actually quite into her and he's actually attracted to her because she eats live animals. He's like, oh, oops, that's my kink. As kind of a last hurrah, they break into a stranger's backyard so that she can eat one of the fish from that koi pond. I don't know why I would write things and then not edit them for months. So I wrote the first draft of this in May of 2019, and then I didn't get it edited until January of 2020. I just sat with the draft for almost a whole year, and in January of 2020, my workshop workshopped it, and then I put off the revisions for months yet again. Don't know why. And then I started submitting it, I think in April, or maybe March, I started submitting it. I don't know. I don't remember when I started submitting it. And then within a couple months, it was picked up by Room. Um, I don't know why I would put off editing the story for so long. It's a pretty short story. It's definitely one of the more disgusting things I've ever written. It is a disgusting story. If you guys want to read Beautiful Animal, it's not available online, so the only way to read it is just, it's just order that issue of Room. So the next story is the one that I do not know how to pronounce its name. Every single time I talk about the story, all my German subscribers are literally so lovely and explain to me how to pronounce it. And I still can't do it right because I forget. This story is called Zugswung. We're gonna go with that Zugzwang. I don't think I'm saying it correctly. I am sorry. <laughs> this is a story about the main character who also is never gendered, but I see them as a woman. At the beginning of the story, she hires a stranger to pretend to be her sister for one night, and it's just them wandering around a city that's never specified, but I intended it to be New York for one night. You guys might have heard me talk about this story because it was long listed for the CBC prize. I wrote this story in August of 2020. And I literally wrote it because I wanted something to submit to the CBC prize. And it's so funny because my motivation for writing the story was like, I want something to submit to the CBC prize. But more than that, it's not because I wanted something to submit to the CBC prize. It's because I had been in a huge writing slump. I couldn't write a story, nothing was working. I needed a deadline to get out of this slump. And so I was like, I'll use the CBC prize deadline as a deadline because I need a deadline where I'm, I don't know what I'm doing and I use it as a deadline and it works magically and then I submitted the story to the CBC Prize and then it was somehow long listed for the CBC Prize. I just had an image in my mind of this character who we never learn her real name but she's referred to as Reed because that's the main character's sister's name and this character's pretending to be her sister so she's just referred to as her sister's name and I had this image of her standing on a street corner and it was just really clear to me. And I also had an image of the narrator. I couldn't see the narrator, but I could like feel the narrator. And I didn't really know what the story was going to be about at all. But I kind of sat with it for a bit. And then I went camping with my family over a weekend. And then while I was camping, I just, I guess I just had some time to think. And I thought through the whole story basically. And a bunch of quotes and passages. And I wrote them down on my phone because I didn't have my computer. And then when I came home, I then pretty much wrote the entire story. Did it take one sitting? Maybe it took more than that, I don't really remember. I gave it to someone to critique. I applied the critiques and then I submitted it. And then the CBC prize was announced in April. I didn't end up shortlisted for the CBC prize. You 
will know this by now. Um, I only made the long list, which is totally fine because I was thrilled just to be on the long list. That was like already the highlight of my life. So I was like, well, I guess I can start submitting the piece now. So this story is available in Plenitude, um, which is an online magazine. So you guys can read it for free. Plenitude is Canada's queer lit mag. So that's really all there is to say on that one. So the final story is one that just came out. So this story is called Elise Holding a Deer Mouse, 1829. Wrote this story, I think it was October of 2020. The initial idea I had was that two people, and I actually originally saw them as men, which is interesting because the story is now about two women. The idea was to have two, these two characters were standing in an art gallery looking at a painting that they planned to steal while dealing with their romantic tension. I was just like, you know what? I just think I need a gay art heist romance in my life. You know, I don't really know where along the lines that went astray, but it ended up changing and it ended up being not about two people looking at a painting they plan to steal and just two people looking at a painting. <laughs> they still had unresolved romantic tension. The way the piece is structured is that it's divided into four sections and each one is a painting. So it starts with the description of a painting and then there's some interaction between the characters and also a flashback about their relationship. There's four sections, but within each section there's an info card about the painting, a description of the painting, the characters interacting, which also has a flashback. So I don't know why it's so complicated. <laughs> Somewhere along the lines, one painting turned into four paintings. I don't really remember exactly how that happened. I did toy with the idea of literally the story just being a flash fiction and it would literally just be a description of a painting and that would be the story. And then I was like, am I overcrowding it by having four paintings? And then I ended up keeping all four because I liked the dual narrative that was building between the paintings. It was very weird to put together. I wrote the story completely non-linearly. Like normally I just write my stories linearly, but this one I wrote the paintings and then I wrote the dialogue that the characters were having in the present. And then I went back and wrote the flashbacks and then I came back and flushed out the dialogue more. So it was completely non-linear. I gave it to just one friend to critique. And once I implemented their critiques, which literally only took one day, I started sending out the story. I spammed this story to so many magazines. When I started submitting this story, I'd been in a big submission slump. I'd only sent out one submission in a month and it was to the CBC Prize, which can't be simultaneous. I was so desperate to submit something. So let me tell you, I spammed this story to so many magazines. I actually sent it to 12 magazines. And normally I only send stories to like four-ish magazines at once. And then when the rejections come back, I send it to a few more, you know, but literally anywhere. And I was like, send. I was hungry for the publication. And it's also a short story. So it was pretty easy to submit because it fits into most magazines word counts. The story ended up getting picked up by Carousel. Um, Carousel is also online. They used to be in print, but they're now online. I realized this is an extremely gay short story update because three of the four stories are canonically gay. And Beautiful Animal could be, just because I wrote the story to be straight doesn't mean it has to be. So I'm just gonna answer a couple questions real quickly. These were Q&A questions that got sent in. So the first question is, which story was the hardest to write and which was the easiest? Do you know why some of them were easier to write than others? To be honest, these were all pretty easy stories to write. Like none of these were really a struggle. The hardest to write was Elise Holding a Deer Mouse, just because structurally it's weird. Like it's bizarre. And there's a dual narrative between the paintings and the fictive present. And that was very hard. Easiest to write. Maybe Hold Me Under Till I See the Light was pretty easy. I don't know, that story just flowed out with so much ease. I can't really explain why. I think how easy or hard a story is to write isn't really based on how hard it is technically. Like there are stories I've written that from an objective technical standpoint are quite hard, but I found them easier to write than ones that maybe objectively are technically a bit easier because those stories were just easier for me to access. And Hold Me Under Till I See the Light was just very easy for me to access. It was there immediately, like I saw it. How much did the stories change from start to finish and how extensive was the editing process with the magazine? Actually, none of these stories changed that much. Hold Me Under Till I See the Light didn't change that much. It didn't change structurally. It's basically like 95% the same as the first draft probably. With the new quarterly, we just did line edits and they weren't that extensive. Um, Beautiful Animal changed the most. I had to reorder the structure quite a bit. But that one actually changed quite a lot. Oh, barely any edits with room. Again, it was just a couple line edits. Zook Zwang, one critique partner edited it and it was nothing huge. I don't think it changed structurally, but it was just line edits. Planetude normally does edits. 
But yeah, the editors were like, normally we do edits. We don't need to for this story because it's pretty clean. And it's probably that clean because I edited it very extensively to submit it to the CBC Prize. So that one is probably the least changed. And then Elise Holina Deer Mouse, I think that one needed to be flushed out. Like when I wrote the first draft, there were aspects of it where I was like, this is just a bit underwritten. So it needed to be flushed out a bit. Again, I did edits from one critique partner that were mostly line edits or clarifying, nothing really structural. And then I didn't do edits with Claire, with Carousel. I think they just proofread it to fit it with their house style. The next question is, if you publish your stories in magazines, will you still publish them in your short story collection? I plan to put all of these in short story collections. Beautiful Animal and Holy Under Till I See the Light are going in Peridolia, which is my first collection. And then Zug Zwang and Elise Holy and Deer Mouse are going in my second collection, which is called Forgive Me, I'm on Fire. How many times did each story get rejected? That's actually shocking. Holy Under Till I See the Light was rejected 10 times. That makes it my most rejected story of any story I've had published. Beautiful Animal was rejected twice in an older version. I submitted it not long after writing it to a magazine and they rejected it. And then I submitted it to a contest, Manola Reviews Fiction Contest. I submitted two stories, Beautiful Animal and Solarium, and they didn't take Beautiful Animal and they uh, I got runner-up for Solarium. But that was an older version of the story. So it was rejected twice and then I revised it after workshop and it was re rejected twice. So four times total. Zugzwang was never rejected, actually, which is shocking. And then Elise Holina Deer Mouse was only rejected one time. It had the potential to be rejected more because I submitted it everywhere, but Carousel picked it up quite quickly. And so I think a lot of magazines just never got the chance to get their rejections in. <laughs> What's each story's protagonist's weapon of choice? Rainy would simply not fight you. <laughs> she simply would not. She would not fight you. Well, the main character from Zug Zwang, like literally compares themselves to like a nuclear bomb at times. So maybe that? And then I think the main character from Elise Holy Deer Mouse, it, it would be a bow and arrow. It would be a bow and arrow. We see eye to eye on that, it'd be a bow and arrow. So titles. Um, did any of these stories' titles change? Oh my god, don't talk to me about title changes. Hold Me Under Till I See the Light went through more title changes than any story I've ever written. When I first started writing the story, it was called God Sleeps in a Bathtub. But I didn't like that because it just sounded awkward to me. And also because it was too literal about the themes. like. I think it was just too blatant that in the story Jude is is essentially seen as a divine figure and it also sounded like a more surreal title than the story was. I ended up calling it Leave Us in the Water. I don't know why. For a while I called it Just Leave Me Here and I submitted it under the title Just Leave Me Here quite a few times. I didn't like that title because I thought it was too melodramatic but I did like that it seemed to fit every single character relationship which was interesting. And then I wanted to call it In Utero because there's a lot of birth and egg imagery in the story and especially because it is a story of like rebirth but that's the title of a Nirvana album. Kurt Cobain got to it first which was a little rude of him. I ended up calling it Hold Me Under Till I See the Light, which was a line in the story. There was a line in the story that was like, I wanted her to hold me under until I saw the light. And I was like, I guess I'm gonna just take that and turn it into the title. And then I just got rid of the line. Zugzwang was never called anything else. And Elise Holy and Deer Mouse 1829 was also never called anything else. Just completely forgot about Beautiful Animal here. Um, it did undergo a title change. It was originally called She Always Kills the Animals. But to be honest, I just didn't like that title. I thought it sounded kind of awkward and I didn't know what it implied within the story. Like, there's a character who eats animals. Like, okay, duh. But the phrasing of it didn't add anything new to the story. So eventually I changed it to Beautiful Animal. Even though it's not my favorite title, like Beautiful Animal is probably one of my least favorite titles of all my titles. I think it's just not super intriguing. The reason I went with the title Beautiful Animal is because that phrase actually means more in the story and actually it was just a more meaningful title, though I don't really like how it sounds and I don't think it's a very strong title in the end. Um, okay, and then the last question was, why did you submit these stories to those lit mags? Um, why do you think they were a good fit? I submitted Hold Me Under Till I See the Light to the New Quarterly, well first of all because I had been rejected by many other places. I like the New Quarterly, don't get me wrong, the New Quarterly is a great magazine, they pay well, they're well established, like there's some clout there. Um, 
But the reason I never submitted to them was laziness because you have to mail in the submissions. And I'd gotten some pretty good rejection letters. Like the story was received positively, but no one had picked it up. I knew that the new quarterly tended towards very like grounded realism. And so I thought that it was actually going to be a good fit. Like I just had a good feeling about it. Room is, I really like Room, but they can be a bit unpredictable because every issue is edited by a different person. Honestly, the story was just short enough. Like I really like Room. I vibe with what they do. Their word counts are really short. And so that's why I submitted to them. But I did think they were a good fit as well, totally. Uh, Zip Swang, obviously CBC Prize first. The CBC Prize has a pretty short word count. So that was the story that I had that was short enough. So I submitted to Plenitude. Plenitude only takes you, one submission per author per year. You gotta cash that in carefully. <laughs> I don't know, I just felt like this was the best story that I'd written in a really long time. Clearly it was long listed for the CBC Prize. Maybe it is the best story that I've ever written. I don't really know. I, I don't know how to rank my stories in terms of what's best, but the objective evidence would say this is the best story I've ever written. They're obviously a journal for queer writers and the story has a queer element to it. Um, it's not about like queer themes, but there is definitely it's there. <laughs> I'd been wanting to be in Plenitude for a long time. I really like them. And then for at least holding a dear mouse, to be honest, I submitted that to any literary magazine that it would that could take it, which was so many. I did have a good feeling about Carousel because they do experimental work and the structure is a bit experimental. I was pretty sure I was in because the same day that my story switched to in progress, they followed me on Twitter. And I was like, Obviously, when a magazine takes a story, it's because they like the story and it fits what they're looking for. I don't have access to their minds. I don't, I'm not in their head, so I don't know exactly what was going through their thoughts. But um, that's why I submitted those stories to those literary magazines. All my published short fiction is linked in the description. I also have a link tree in my Twitter and Instagram bios, which is constantly updating. So if you're ever looking for the most updated links to all my published short fiction, it is there. If you guys have any publications, I would love to know where are they? Where can I read them? Just tell me about your stories and where they're published because I'm so happy for you. So that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, you can always send me an ask on Tumblr and I'll see you in another video.